on the treadmill, as you may have. For those of you unfamiliar with my work, every year I read through every issue of every English language nutrition journal in the world. So busy folks like you don't have to. I then compile all the most interesting, most groundbreaking, most practical findings to new videos and articles I upload it nearly every day to my nonprofit site, nutritionfacts.org. Everything on the website is free. There are no ads, no commercial sponsorships, no kickbacks, strictly non commercial, not selling anything, just put it up as a public service, as a labor of love, as a tribute to my grandmother, whose own life was saved with evidence based nutrition. Let us go to your questions. First question up is from ROJ. Um, aw, thank you. What kind of cookware do you use at home? Cast iron, ceramic. You know, I have a video actually on uh, the best cookware. Um, and I think I came, if I remember the, my own video correctly, that's the problem when you do thousands of videos. Can't remember. It, you know, people ask me a question, but like, I got a video about that. I watched the video, my own video to, to remember. Um, so I think stainless steel came out on top. So cast iron or stainless steel. Cast iron actually has the advantage of actually getting some iron for those um, for uh, uh, premenopausal uh, women, for menstruating women um, who may need extra iron. Um, uh, and then, yeah, stainless steel for everybody else. All right, let's see. Next up, um, Carolyn Walford asks, perimenopausal, I'm eating healthfully, told that mild anemia. Ooh, you have a, you have a, uh, a UK hemoglobin or a probably the rest of the whole world except us hemoglobin. I have to do a conversion here uh, for US uh, units. Um, ferritin serum B12. Um, serum I'm told to stop B12, take iron tablets. Um, but oh, can't tolerate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, iron tablets are uh, definitely uh, tough on people's stomachs. Um, there's actually some new iron formulations on the market. I've just actually was the other day compiling all of them into a folder to, to uh, do a video about them, but haven't read the studies yet, so don't know. Um, uh, the, um, if indeed your hemoglobin is too low, if you're anemic, which I can't tell by your units, um, uh, then uh, I, in addition to eating iron-rich foods you, um, with every meal, you want to eat vitamin C rich foods with every meal to improve the absorption of that iron. So people eating plant-based diets actually get more iron than other people, but it's a non-heme iron that isn't absorbed as well, but you can improve its absorption by eating a vitamin, uh, vitamin C rich foods, so citrus and tropical fruits and bell peppers and broccoli with your meals at the same time in your stomach with the iron rich foods like, um, you know, legumes, whole grains, etc. cetera. Um, and then, you want to avoid the iron absorption inhibitors at again at the same time, like tea is the is the primary one. Um, so you don't want to drink tea with your meals. Like we're talking about black tea, green tea from the actual tea plant. Um, uh, so um, so if you want to drink tea, drink tea before your meals. Let it drain out of your stomach before you actually get food in there, so it does not prevent the absorption of that iron. All right, next question. Um, which I'll randomly click at man of constant sorrow uh, says I'm 40 still got acne I don't know if that's why you're sorrowful but um, any advice um, so a typical advice in, um, is to cut down dairy intake presumably you're already doing that and so the other thing is high glycemic in um, index foods or high glycemic load foods and so that would be you know powdered grains um, uh, added sugar foods, so stop drinking soda, that kind of stuff, um, and uh, move to, you know, intact whole grains, etc., and that should help with your acne. All right, next question is, it's from Sil Sylvie Fashion, Fashion House. Um, what should I do? 27, um, stop menstruating. Um, and uh, so um, it's possible that you have um, you, um, uh, you've lost so much body fat that your body actually thinks you're in kind of a starvation situation um, and so says, oh, I better hold off on having children until you know things get better, the harvest gets better. Um, and so that's one of many reasons you can stop uh, menstruating, but I would go to your physician, they can do some lab work, 
uh, look at your hormone level and see what's going on. But that's a very common, particularly for young female athletes. Um, they're very active. Their body fat gets very low. Um, and that's kind of a trigger to your body that, uh, ooh, we, this might not be a good time to have kids. Um, so, And the reason it's so important is, I mean, so you can imagine some people thinking, great, I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, my period. The problem is that um, this can um, impair bone health long term. So it's critically important that you get your body back moving again. All right. Next question. Jeremy says, I'm oh, looking for a colon cleanse for smelly gas. Uh, despite eating healthy, what can I do? Um, the, you should only cleanse your colon from top to bottom, not from bottom up. Um, and I've got some videos about why it's not why um, uh, that's not a good idea. Why um, things like coffee enemas, etc., are not a good idea. Um, uh, and so, um, what can you do? Presumably, this is a kind of a gut microbiome thing. You may have some something brewing, whether you took some antibiotic or something, just knocked your uh, knock things off. The most important thing you can do is feed your good microbes. So there's some bad microbes down there that may be producing these um, these smelly gases. And so you want to crowd them out with the good ones. What do you do? Well, you feed, preferentially feed the good ones by eating prebiotics. What are prebiotics? That's fiber resistant starch. So, you know, legumes, whole tech grains um, to feed your good bacteria so they can crowd out the bad bacteria. And so you can help with an issue like that. Okay, Lynn Roy says, is Alma, I guess this should be Amla green tea, better for you than a quarter teaspoon of Amla powder. So I believe this is a typo for Amla, which is dried Indian gooseberries. Um, uh, and so I've actually never seen Amla green tea on the market. This sounds disgusting, um, but... I can't imagine it would contain a quarter teaspoon of amla powder. And even if it did, you would only get the water soluble components if you kept it in a tea bag or something. And so if you wanted the benefits of amla, I would recommend the powder um, rather than the tea. Although um, uh, I do have a video about amla green tea as a very effective mouthwash. Um, and so would indeed recommend that. Um, but, uh, you're actually spitting it out. You're not actually drinking it. All right. Next question. Uh, Annalise, Annalisa, does coffee interfere with vitamin D absorption? No. Um, coffee does, um, uh, half as much interfere with iron absorption. So I forget, I think tea is like 60%. Um, reduction in bioavailability, and then coffee is more like 30%, if I remember correctly. Um, I, I just came out with a video on it recently. Um, but should not affect vitamin D absorption at all. In fact, most, I mean, the way most people get vitamin D is through their skin. It's sunshine vitamin. Um, uh, but if you're taking vitamin D supplements, um, you would actually uh, absorb it better with a large meal. But I think that's the only thing that affects uh, bioavailability that I know of. Uh, next question. Uh, oh, I don't know what that is. That we are watching live. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, Cindy says, do I recommend taking K2 when taking D3? No, I just did a webinar about K2. You don't have to take K2, period. Why? Your body makes K2. You say, wait a second. What if I don't have a good microbiome? No, not your microbiome. Your actual body. The cells in your body make K2. From K1, where are you going to get K1? Dark green leafy vegetables. Eat your greens and don't worry about your K. Unless you're on uh, Coumadin, unless you're on a blood thinning drug, then you do have to worry about how much vitamin K you're eating. All right. Sebastian Ian says, is it safe to eat mushroom powder with food every day? Maybe one or three tablespoons. I better to take it for a week and stop for a month. What kind of mushroom powder are you talking about? Um, so I, I'm trying to think. The only concern would be a raw um, uh, agaris kind of white mushrooms. So raw white mushrooms or raw portobello or raw criminy mushrooms. These are all the same mushroom. Um, and the, uh, the, the agaris genus mushrooms have some called garotene, which is 
uh, destroyed by cooking. So that's why we want to cook our white mushrooms or portobello mushrooms. Um, not something you have to worry about with shiitake mushrooms or oyster mushrooms. So um, that's the only concern I would imagine because presumably they don't cook the mushrooms before they powder it. And so if it's um, uh, oyster mushroom powder, then take it, eat it every day. Um, be a great source of a longevity vitamin called ergothionine, which I talk about in my upcoming book, How Not to Age, which will be out next year. Um, and eating oyster mushroom powder would be a fantastic way to get it. Oyster mushrooms are, I think, the most concentrated source. Of course, you could also just eat oyster mushrooms. You can actually grow them in your kitchen. Very cool. There's these little kits. Uh, make great gifts, holiday gifts. Anyway. All right. Next up. All right. Abel, send. The, here's a link to, uh, well, I can't, uh, the link doesn't work for me. Sorry. Uh, my little interface here I, doesn't bring hyperlinks. But I do know about the peer study. The peer study is an observational study um, looking at uh, populations around the world. Um, but we don't need any observational evidence pro or con now because we have interventional studies. We actually randomize people to eat eggs or not. Um, and you can show bad things happen when they eat eggs, like their TMAO goes up or their LDL cholesterol goes up. Um, and so that's why we don't want to eat um, we want to minimize their intake of eggs. All right. Um, someone's just responding to somebody else. Scott says, in a previous video, I mentioned adding spices. Oh, God, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I don't know where I mentioned this, but yeah, it's something I'm going to talk about. Probably, I don't know if it's going to make it in the book, but I'll put it in the How Not to Age cookbook, which will be out even the next year after that. Um, so, uh, the background is that, you know, I recommend, you know, you eat a quarter teaspoon of turmeric every day. And I like the, I mean, I like the taste of turmeric in some things like curry, like I'll put turmeric and curry, but if I want to eat turmeric every day, I'm not eating curry every day. And so I just found like everything tasted like curry. Ugh. All right. So, I mean, which, I don't know if you really like the taste. Um, but, uh, but so I had, I had difficulty following my own advice. Um, and so. What I did is I used turmeric capsules. Um, so uh, not turmeric extract capsules, or, but just the whole spice, just whole powdered turmeric root, just in capsule form. The problem is, the problem is it's really expensive. It's like ridiculous. I mean, it's so cheap per pound, but when you pay someone to put it in the capsules, and so for a while I was making my own capsules, that was wasting time. Anyway, um, so then I discovered these little, these little, these little, uh, right, potato starch packets. It's basically the, yeah, it's little discs of potato starch, um, one ingredient, and you just put stuff that you don't like the taste of in it. And then you, you twist it up and you dip it in water and you swallow it like a pill or whatever. Anyway, um, very cool. And so um, then I was like, oh my God, I can eat all this stuff that tastes disgusting, like AMLA. So here's the other ones. So AMLA, dried into your gooseberries, have all these wonderful properties, but it's the most disgusting stuff on the planet. Here's a way you can eat it. A turmeric black cumin, black cumin powder. I talk about the wonders of black cumin powder um, in How Not to Diet, um, not just for weight loss, but for cholesterol, all sorts of other good stuff. Um, again, it has a peppery taste, which is good in some foods, not necessarily others. Um, and the final one is what I'll talk about, you'll read about in How Not to Age, is pepper longueen. There's a longevity compound found in the long pepper plant. Um, and you can actually buy long pepper. It's in the black pepper family. Um, but again, all your food would taste like it if you're eating it every day. So that's my fourth component. Uh, so basically, I take a pound of each, mix it in a big bag, and then take a big scoop and put it in my little potato starch thing. And it's very cool. Anyway, so yeah, those are the four. Long pepper, um, black cumin, powdered black cumin seeds, turmeric and dried Indian gooseberry powder, also known as AMLA. All right, next up, Welsh alcoholic says, why is life so short? Well, maybe because you're an alcoholic. Um, is it even worth eating healthy? If you're going to die soon anyway, um, eating healthy and living an extra 15 years doesn't exactly seem worth it. I guess it depends what you do in those 15 years. Um, uh, uh, and, I mean... Uh, it's possible that we're going to figure out aging. Um, you know, there's a, there's a scientist and kind of futurist by name of uh, Kurzweil, Ray Kurzweil, who thinks that we're going to figure out aging. 
um, such that we can basically live as long as we want and thinks that it may just be a few decades down the road where this we're going to have this. And so um, if you, you know, living past that point, um, so basically living long enough to live forever is maybe a real thing. Um, and I, I actually talk about the um, the, the, the various theories and how much weight we should put into the, that kind of thinking. But it is possible within our lifetime um, that we will kind of figure out how to live as long as we want. And so living to that point and then having the option, um, maybe, you know, living those extra 15 years to live another 150 um, is actually a real possibility. All right. And Kit or... Um, Sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. What are the pros and cons? Ah, oh, Maka! Um, so, oh, well, here, let me pull that up. I think I talked about it in uh, How Not to Age in the Preserving Your Sex Life chapter. Let me see. And we'll do a little uh, preview here. Um, I don't even remember what I wrote, but I'll bring up the chapter. I'll bring up the draft chapter. The whole book is written. It's just got a lot of editing and fact checking to do. Let me pull up Maka. There it is, Maka Root. Let's do this. All right. Maka Root advertised Peruvian Viagra. Uh, important uh, dietary stable of the people of Peru, evidently, uh, but appears to have been overly hyped as a libido enhancer based largely on studies of male rodents. Are you a male rodent? Well, um, so uh, yes, maca significantly increases the number of intromissions, which is vaginal penis insertions in male mice and rats. But out of the two trials on sexual de desire in male humans, only one showed significant benefit. It took eight weeks to show an effect, um, though, which may explain the negative results of the second study, which only lasted two weeks. Um, one study on the management of SSRI induced sexual function, like, you know, pr due to Prozac or Zoloft or something, uh, mostly women suggested maca may be useful, but unfortunately there was no placebo control. And the necessity of placebos is illustrated by a maca trial for infertility. Maca increased sperm concentration by 40%. Wow. Yeah. But the placebo in the study improved sperm concentration by 76%. So maca actually didn't work at all. Maybe it actually worked bad. Um, so that's why having placebo. Control is especially important for um, female sexual dysfunction. Um, placebo effect evidently accounts for more than two-thirds of treatment effects based on studies from more than 4,000 women. Very interesting. Similar to placebo efficacy of antidepressants. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There was one small randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial of MACA for sexual dysfunction postmenopausal women, 14 women, Randomized to three and a half grams, about uh, um, three quarters of a teaspoon of maca powder a day or placebo powder for six weeks after point which they switched for another six weeks. Crossover trial. Very nice. And while on maca, they reported significantly fewer symptoms of sexual dysfunction. Okay. So there we go. Um, it's a tiny trial, but randomized double blind placebo controlled crossover trial significantly fewer symptoms of sexual dysfunction. So if you are a postmenopausal woman, um, try, you can try three quarters of a teaspoon of maca powder a day um, for six weeks and see if it makes you feel better. Rachel is 23, um, missed periods for four years, now irregular, um, been eating healthy the last couple of years, some abdominal weight gain. Ultrasounds as ovaries uh, suggested of uh, PCOS, otherwise normal. Um, and so uh, cause of the weight gain. Um, so of that one of the, um, this kind of characteristic of PCOS can be weight gain, can be uh, uh, excess uh, hair growth. It's kind of a list of, of symptoms, um, but uh, the, the kind of, Period, period irregularity is kind of a characteristic symptom as well. Um, and so it just may, because of the hormonal changes, it just means you may have to eat even healthier than everybody else to, uh, to achieve um, uh, an ideal weight. And I would encourage you to do that. Um, that's, I wrote a book for you, How Not to Diet. Go to your local public library, pull it out. Um, you can basically ignore the first half of the book where I argue for why we should eat a whole food plant-based diet, concentrate on the second half of the book, 
which gives kind of 21 ways, my so-called 21 tweaks on how we can accelerate weight gain if you're already eating healthy. All right, next up, um, uh, Goggin. Oh, I shouldn't even pronounce these names. You know, I'm getting them wrong, and I apologize. Sir, I feel a plant-based diet is not very fulfilling. How can I make it very fulfilling so that I don't have to eat again and again? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's true that healthy foods are calorically dilute, and you may have to eat more food than you're used to eating before. Otherwise, you're not going to feel satisfied. Um, and so eat more food. You may have to eat more frequent amounts of food, um, particularly if you're losing too much weight. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you can stick with some of the more calorically dense foods. So, you know, rather than just fruits and vegetables, you know, whole grains, legumes, nuts and seeds, avocados, these are calorically dense foods, um, trail mix kind of foods, mixing nuts and dried fruits, another calorically dense food, um, that may make you feel more uh, fulfilled, satiated. All right. My backyard engineer. Not necessarily my backyard engineer, but um, uh, any recommendation for someone who's been dealing with post-viral syndrome and post-exertional malaise for the last um, two years? You know, I've been looking into that because I wanted to do some videos on long COVID. And, you know, it's just too early. And so uh, there hasn't been a dietary trial. There actually are a few papers suggesting a plant-based diet may help kind of theoretically based on a theoretical basis. So urging trials to be done that haven't actually been done. Um, so, I mean, we do have trials showing that people who are eating plant-based uh, seem uh, significantly less likely to get COVID in the first place and uh, more likely to have a, um, a mild course. But in terms of what happens for long COVID, hasn't been done yet. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's basically what long COVID is, this kind of post-viral syndrome. And unfortunately, uh, we don't uh, really know what's going on in the body. We presume it's some kind of inflammatory mechanism. Um, and so one would presume an anti-inflammatory diet like a whole food plant-based diet would help. Um, but uh, that's, uh, and so you're saying, look, I'm already eating healthy. So you can eat particularly anti-inflammatory foods like uh, chamomile tea, um, you know, dark berries, that kind of thing, and see if that helps. Unfortunately, um, there's there's just not much science out there. Hopefully, there'll be a flood of new science based on long COVID and whether or not you're dealing um, with um, uh, whether the post-viral syndrome you're suffering was from COVID or not. Maybe the same things will help. And so maybe the in the end, the pandemic will be good for you because finally there'll be research um, uh, for your condition. Karen says, is the sunflower oil used in algal omega-3 oils a problem? I'd a teeny amount. I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, it's just empty calories, but it's literally 10 empty calories. So, yeah, that's something I'm worried about. And you're not going to tip your omega-3, omega-6 balance with, you know, you know, a gram of oil. Um, uh, Marcel says... Do you have any food recommendations for all oh, for dialysis or can you try um, transplant patients? Um, um, so uh, for those with kidney failure, with chronic kidney disease, kidney transplants, where you're really trying to protect your kidneys, it's all about low protein, um, uh, plant-based diets, whole food plant-based diets. Um, uh, but dialysis is different um, because dialysis, you have no kidney function. So it's very critical to you know, make sure you're not getting too much phosphorus, too much potassium. And so you really have to work with a renal dietitian. Um, but you can still, of course, eat healthy because leading cause of, of death for people with kidney disease is actually heart, heart disease. Most people with kidney failure don't actually make it to dialysis because they die of a heart attack first. So critically important to eat healthy um, if your kidneys aren't working properly. Okay, Wurtibus Wer says, why, oh, why aren't peanuts? In the Daily Dozen app. Uh, well, they should be. I mean, they should be on the nuts and seeds, even though they aren't technically nuts and seeds, technically legumes, but uh, nutritionally, they can be dealt with as nuts and seeds. Um, in terms of, well, I, so in the app, basically, I listed the uh, examples. Uh, so I obviously didn't list, every, like, under vegetables, I don't list every vegetable. So you can say, why aren't artichokes? I don't know if artichokes are on there or not. Well, it's, it's just because there's a long list. So I'm sure there's lots of nuts that didn't make the cut. And again, it's I was just, these are examples. Um, uh, 
Uh, and mostly based on what I was eating. Like these are the daily dozen foods I eat. And uh, so uh, why don't I eat peanuts? Because they're healthier nuts. So for example, walnuts, probably the healthiest nuts. And so if I have an option between walnuts and peanuts, I'll eat some walnuts. All right. Oh, Rachel's back. I think it's the same Rachel. Uh, what's my opinion on retainers? How interesting to maintain tooth position, worn for life or at home tooth uh, whitening trays. Retainers to maintain. Yeah, you would have to ask a dentist or periodontitis or periodontist. Um, uh, yeah, I do not know anything about um, retainers. Um, and in terms of tooth whitening trays, I have some uh, some videos on tooth whitening. Um, uh, I think I have one video on tooth whitening. Check it out. Um, I think it was basically just busting a myth that like strawberries and baking soda worked or something like this. I, I, I don't exactly remember. Um, but, uh, but from what I know about the, you know, kind of the peroxide gels that they use in tooth whitening trays, I mean, the, the downsides are pretty much just, you can get gum irritation, you can get some pain, some kind of little shooting pains. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's cosmesis. It's just for cosmetic effect. Um, uh, so, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, they, they, I, I, I've never run across any uh, work suggesting that there's any kind of major downsides, though it's not something I've really looked into. Sorry to say. Okay, Jump Man Matthew. Oh, he's it looks like they're replying to somebody else. Um, Travis says, are there any health benefits? Oh, yes, there are. How cool is that? Capsaicin is the spicy compound that makes hot peppers hot. And I have a whole chapter talking about um, chili peppers as a longevity food in uh, How Not to Die. Excuse me, in How Not to Age. Oh, oh my God, it's funny. And the reason that this is kind of quasi top of mind is because my uh, the fact checker, um, I have an amazing fact checker, Elisa Finlay, um, and she... Uh, and she, and so I had said something that it's like, uh, it's a half a jalapeno's worth of capsaicin that the study showed these amazing effects. And it turns out I was totally off. That's actually, oh, now I forget exactly what it was. I think it's like a third of a habanero's worth. And anybody who knows jalapenos and habaneros knows that's a big difference. Um, and then, so it's like a third of a fresh habanero's worth a day, or I think it was like, a teaspoon of like mildly hot red pepper powder, which might be easier. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I was way off, but was corrected. Um, but uh, you can read all about the benefits of capsaicin and spicy foods in How Not to Age, which will be out in 13 months. Okay, only got one minute. Let's see if I do a really quick question. Oh, what about phytic acid compounds? Sounds like it reduces nutrient absorption. It does in puppies. It does in rats. Um, and that's why we thought it was a um, it was a so-called anti-nutrient. But when actually, when, but in people, phytates or phytic acid, same thing, actually has beneficial effects. So type in phytates into nutritionfacts.org and you will be amazed and you will no longer soak your nuts um, because people soak their nuts to get rid of phytic acid. You don't want to get rid of phytic acid. I guess you can soak your nuts and drink the water, but why would you do that? Anyway, uh, phytic acid is a good thing. Um and so check out Fightaste and NutritionFacts.org. Thanks, everyone, uh, for stopping by for QA. and I'm off to uh, another review in 23 seconds. And uh, see you next month. Have a wonderful holiday. Bye, miss you. How do you turn this thing on? There we go.